for when it's an hour. Come down onto your back. Be on your back. Feel the floor underneath you. The floor is our primary prop in yoga. We use the floor all the time. Feel it under the back of your head. Feel it under your shoulders. Feel it under your hips. Feel it under your heels. Roll your shoulder blades back and down the back. And breathe. Hug your right knee into your body. And maybe wiggle around into that hip. Maybe wiggle around into that ankle. Yeah. Take that knee across your body. Find a supine twist. So when I do this one, I like to pick up my hip and put it backwards an inch or two, just to make a really nice line between my head and my hip. That's not necessary, but if you want. If you want, you can turn your head away from that foot, making a complete twist all up and down your spine. Come down onto your back, cross your right ankle on your left knee, thread your hands through. This is called figure four. Roll your shoulder blades back and down the back. We're stretching the hip, the hip stretch. Breathe into that. And now come up, come onto your forearms. We're in a bicycle. Yeah. Bicycling is hard. This is core work. It feels hard. Engage your, what we call in yoga, your mula bandha. Your mula bandha is your kegels, your pelvic floor. If this is hard for you, it's because it's hard. It's hard work. Okay, come down, put your feet on the floor, the back of your head on the floor, shoulders on the floor, lift up your hips, grab your hands underneath you, roll your shoulder blades back and down the back. This is bridge pose. I'm going to tell you a few things about bridge while we're here, okay? Stay here and bridge. Stay and breathe. So you're maybe feeling it in your legs. Bridge is leg work. We are working the legs. You're stretching the abdomen. You're opening the heart. Repositioning the shoulders. We're constricting the throat, that's on purpose. Try to breathe through your throat. Breathe up through your nose, feel the air coming down through your throat. That stimulates your thyroid and your parathyroid, both of which are in your throat. All right, come down. Lay one vertebrae at a time, back down onto the mat. Yeah. Yes. Hug your left knee into your body, take your right leg low. Roll your shoulder blades back and down the back. Here we are again. And feel on the floor underneath you. If you want to, you can roll a little bit into that hip or roll a little bit into that ankle. Take that knee across your body, find a supine twist. If you want, you can pick up your hip and scoot it backwards a little bit. Yeah. And breathe. Maybe turning your head away from your knee. Come back down onto your back, cross your left ankle on your right knee, thread your hands through, figure four. Here's your left hip. Breathe into it. Mm. 
Mm, good. Release, cross your ankles, roll up to seated, or come to seated however you want to come to seated. We're in a cross-legged pose now. Let me say a few things about cross-legged, okay? Um, if you run a lot, your cross-legged might look like this, because you've got tight hips. It's okay. Or if you, you know, you sit a lot, you might, uh, likewise, the tight hips. It's okay. If you have pretty flexible hips, you might want to try coming into a half lotus, but only do this if this knee can't feel anything, okay? That's when you know. One way or another, you're crossing your legs. Let's take our hands to our knees. We're going to inhale forward and exhale back. We're drawing a circle around our hips and breathing. Exhaling back, inhaling forward, exhaling back. Yep, switch direction, same thing. Inhale forward, exhale back. Yeah, good. So we're grounding ourselves here. Is your first chakra, your tailbone, associated with your adrenal glands and with your sense of place, your sense of home. All right, your hips are grounded. Come up to a nice seat. Take your hands to your heart. Inhale up. We did this before. Exhale to your heart. Inhale up. Exhale to your heart. Inhale up. Exhale to your heart. Inhale up. Stretching the shoulders, stretching the throat. Keep them up. And then take your right hand to your left knee and your left hand behind you and twist. Rolling your shoulder blades back and down the back if you can. Try to make your spine happy here. Looking behind you. It's a big twist. Back arm goes across the ceiling. Watch it go. Yeah. Stack the eyes of your elbows. Wrap your hands around each other. Inhale that whole thing up. Tip your head forward. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. One more. Let's do it one more time. Inhale up, tipping your head forward. Feel it in your neck, feel it in your shoulders. So much release. Let go of your hands. Walk your hands forward. We're running a cross-legged forward bend. Now, be in your cross-legged forward bend and breathe. I'm gonna say a lot of boring stuff. You can tune it out if you want to, okay? <clears throat> Here it comes. So this pose and all forward bends are sort of, um, they're what people who don't do yoga think of as yoga. They're like, oh, I need to touch my toes, basically. In this pose, our toes are not involved, but you see what I'm saying here. It's about like, they think they need to get down low. Like that's what we're trying to do. It's not, it's not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is find a stretch in the hips. So just find yours. It really doesn't matter what your pose looks like, I promise. Just find yours, find that stretch, find something that feels good and breathe into it. into your body and just be deep in your body. That's your work. That's your work. Good. Come on up. Release your legs. Come here. You're going to love this one. Boat. Everybody loves boat. Navasana. It's core work. So you can have your feet like this or like this. It doesn't really matter. You can have your legs straight or you can have them bent. It's going to be harder if they're straight. We're working the core here. We're really, really working the core. Just like when we were bicycling, when I was like, if this feels hard, it's because it's hard. Same thing here. It's hard work. Take your shoulders up to your ears, back and down the back. We're working. Don't worry about this. 
Go like this, so that feels better. You can have your feet on the ground. I, I have some students who do it with their feet on the ground. That's fine. Feel your core working. And breathe. And then come down. Put your feet on the floor, back of your head on the floor. I'm trying to stay in the shot here. Back of your head on the floor, shoulders on the floor, bridge pose. I sort of switched directions. I think last time I did the bridge pose the other way. I don't know how that happened. You don't need to switch directions. Just be wherever you are. Grab your hands underneath you if that feels good. You feel your legs working. You feel your abdomen stretching. You feel your throat constricted. You feel your breath coming up and down here. Also, we're, re we're reversing the flow of blood. Everything from your legs is coming down to your head and your heart. So good. This is an inversion. Yoga is all about inversion. Switching things up in your body. Good. Come on down. Hug your knees and wiggle back and forth. I was talking about your adrenals before a little bit. So here, right under your rib cage, you can feel your kidneys. I mean, maybe you can pretend to feel your kidneys. On top of the kidneys are the adrenals. So now we're gonna do an important thing. We're gonna send our breath down into our belly. Okay, does breath work? But of a very mellow kind. You're just gonna breathe down into your belly. You keep doing that while I talk, okay? So the thing about that is your body has two main ways of functioning in the nervous system, sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system. So sympathetic is flight or flight, fight or flight. It's where we spend a lot of our time. Parasympathetic is your healing nervous system. That's where your body goes when it knows it's safe, when it knows it's relaxed. That's when it starts to heal itself, right? So, when you breathe down into your belly, the way we're practicing right now, you physically trick your body into going into the parasympathetic nervous system because it's really pretty impossible to panic and breathe like that at the same time. And so your body's like, okay, I guess everything's good. I'm gonna move you into the parasympathetic nervous system now, okay? So wherever we go in our practice from here, we are going to move around a lot. There's going to be a lot of, like, you know, a little bit of challenge. Try to keep your breath down here. Try to stay in the parasympathetic nervous system. That's what we do. That's our thing. All right. Engage your mula bandha. Remember I talked about that before, your kegels. Open your arms. Take your arms to the insides of the thighs and the outsides of your shins for happy baby. Happy baby. And then we go back and forth if you want. Yeah. This is it, you know, this is all you need to do. We're going to do other stuff and work muscles and stuff like that, but you know, whatever. This is, this is it right here. All right, release it. Cross your ankles, roll up to seated. Now, um, for those of you who are keeping track, I know we did twist one way and not the other way. I'm going to do it later. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Roll over your feet. Come to tabletop. Spread your fingers apart wide. All you advanced people who are thinking about uh, arm balances, Pay attention to your fingers. I'm not going to talk about it right now, but pay attention to your fingers. All right. Inhale, cow lift. Drop your belly, melt your heart forward. Exhale, cat tuck, belly button to the spine, spine to the ceiling. Feel ten toenails all the way around. Inhale, cow lift. This is huge right here, right? Exhale, cat tuck. Make it a wave up and down the spine. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Take that breath down into your belly. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, down dog, on a mukha spanasana. 
Downward facing dog. Here we go. So a pretty important yoga pose right here. Down dog. Walk it out. There's so much I can say about down dog. I need to do like its own video. But I guess I will say this much. If you feel this in your shoulders, it's okay. It means your shoulders are building, you're getting some yoga shoulders. It's good. Just like breathe through that is fine. Okay. Also remember that this pose is a big leg stretch. Stretch out the backs of your legs, stretch out your hamstrings, stretch out your calves. That's what walking the dog is about. Yeah. Your heels don't need to touch the ground today or ever. Doesn't ever matter. All right, bend your knees, look between your hands, and we're gonna step to the front of the mat. And then let's inhale to a flat back. I'm trying to make my back parallel to the floor. And I'm trying to find this lumbar curve. Flat back is a great place to feel the connection between your hamstrings and your lumbar spine. Feel that, just feel it. Feel your feet on the floor. Yeah, and now come into your Uttanasana forward bend. Here's another pose that people think of as yoga. Like if they don't do yoga, they're like, this is, this is it right here. I don't care if you touch your toes at all today or ever, it does not matter. We're stressing our hamstrings. That's what we're looking for. And you're looking for the same connection, hamstrings to low back. Just be gentle with yourself. Find something that feels like a nice stretch and be there, okay? That's what we're doing. All right, inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, hands to your heart. We're gonna do a few sun salutes. Surya Namaskar, salutation to the sun. Stay with your breathing. Keep up to the extent that you're able. Inhale, arms over your head. It's about breathing. Exhale, swan dive, forward bend. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, find the floor, step back. Here comes plank pose, everybody loves plank. Plank. We're trying to make our body look like a plank. And now, this is tricky. We're gonna lower down and hover. Chaturanga Dandasana is a hovering plank, arms at 90 degrees, and then we're gonna inhale over our toes, open our heart. If you got your knees off the ground, you're an up dog. If you got your knees on the ground, you're in cobra. Same deal, whatever, pick one. And then roll back over your toes, lift from your core, down dog. Walk it out. I'm gonna go into more detail on the, on the sun saloon in another video, but you're doing fine. Bend your knees, look between your hands, step or jump to the front of the mat. I don't care if you jump. Inhale, fly back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, hands to your heart. Breathe here. Yeah. Did you feel that? We just, we like, we, we rolled out our whole body. It was like we took a rolling pin. Just rolled in. <laughs> Let's do it again. Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, swan dive forward bend. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step back, plank pose. Same, exhale, lower down, hover, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, over your toes. Roll your shoulder blades back and down the back. We're opening our heart here. Exhale, roll back over your toes. Down dog. Walk it out. If you can't get that toe rolling thing yet, don't worry about it. It'll come. Try to do it if you can. Bend your knees, look between your hands. Step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Breathe here. <clears throat> The room that I'm practicing in here is freezing in addition to being full of band equipment. And so I am, uh, my hamstrings are, you know, they're a little crunchy. I can feel that. So I'm trying to be gentle with myself. You be gentle with yourself too, okay? Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, swan dive over man. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, find the floor, plank pose. Same exhale, lower down, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, over your toes. Exhale, roll back over your toes, down dog. Bottom of your exhale, bend your knees, look between your hands, step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. So, <clears throat> different schools of yoga teach the sun saloon in different ways and uh, slightly different, they're approximately the same. The way that I'm a little more hardcore than some people is that Chaturanga Dandasana, the hovering plank. I'm really encouraging you guys to work on that because that's your biceps. And even if it's hard in the beginning, 
Coming from the plank to the hovering plank, just try it. That's gonna build you up here, okay? Inhale, arms over your head. We're gonna do it one more time. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, swan dive forward back. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step back plank. Same exhale, lower down, hover. Inhale, over your toes, open your heart. Exhale, roll back over your toes, down dog. Same exhale, bend your knees up between your hands, step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Now we're gonna stay in our forward bend. Let's just stay here, let's just stay here for like the next 45 minutes, okay? And, and maybe like give yourself a massage on the top of your head. I like it that this is a video. I do yoga to videos all the time. It's a nice way to be instructive, quote unquote, but at the same time to be really deep in your body because nobody can see you, right? Do whatever you want. Maybe give yourself a massage back here on your occiput. This is my new favorite part of my body right here, between the skull and the top of the spine. It's a place of intense activity. Just, you know, massage that a little bit. Yeah, and then inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, hands to your heart. Good. I'm turning, you don't need to turn. Come to the front of your mat for Tadasana. Tadasana is mountain pose. Mountain pose is our number one, number one, number one most important pose in yoga. Here it goes. So your feet are hip distance apart. If you don't know what your hip distance is, put your fists together, put it between your feet. That's your hip distance. It's like magic anatomy stuff. All right. So then we're gonna press down through the ball mounds of the big toes like this, and the ball mounds of the pinky toes, right? Basically what I'm describing here is you're just finding the edges of your feet. You're finding the edges of your feet, the front, the back, the inner edges, the outer edges. And then you're gonna move your weight around and, and just read it, read how you stand, okay? It sounds like dumb yoga stuff, but it's actually, it's actually, you know, as, like athletes, for example, know all about pronation and supination. Like we pretty much do that, all of us do that on one foot or the other, favor one side. Here we're trying to undo that. And we're trying to really be honest about how we're carrying our weight on our feet and balance it. This is important. Yeah. Good. So the feet are 90% of mountain pose. Really find your feet. And then we're taking our kneecaps into our quads. So watch that motion again. This is why we wear tight pants. Ready? So my knees are relaxed. And now I'm taking them up into the quads. Quads engage. The quads rotate inward slightly. So I'm taking the shins, rotating them outward slightly. I know that's a complicated movement. If, if it doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. But basically what happens is I'm lightly engaging all the way up and all the way down, both legs up to my waist, slightly engaged, lightly. Really feeling the feet here. Low ribs go down and back. Shoulders, watch this. Shoulders go up and back. That is so huge. We already did it a bunch of times when we did our sun salutes and we did those cobras. Let's do it again. Shoulders go up and back. We're trying to have like our angel's wings touch, right? Not touch. Depending on how hardcore your teachers are about this stuff, like in ballet and some forms of Pilates, they're gonna tell you to like pretend like there's a pencil in between your muscles, I think, whatever. We're just, mm, right? So find that. Chin comes out of your chest. Head floats like a balloon. Push the back of your head against the air and you're in Tadasana. And now feel your skeleton, imagine your skeleton. Your foot bones, your knee bones, your legs, your hips, your shoulders, your rib cage, your skull. When we try to find alignment, we're trying to balance our body trying to find a place where we can hold ourselves with minimum stress and then build muscles around that formation so that we can move out into the world with minimum stress. So we found our Tadasana. 
is beautiful. Find your breath. Yeah. Breathing into Dasana. That's it. That's yoga. I'm going to move you now into some crazy balances, and you're going to be like, this is horrible. But don't worry about it because you're breathing into your belly. You found your Tadasana, you found your balance, that's all you need. Okay, it's not that crazy, don't worry. So lean your body weight to the right. Pick up your left leg. Square your hips here. A few different ways you can do this pose. This is it, by the way, we're here. Um, if you want to, you can bend your knee. If you want to, you can grab that knee. If you want to, you can grab under the hamstring, straighten the leg. Mm. If you want to, you can grab the toe. Uh, those, those are all just like, you know, all of yoga is a continuum. This is probably in between. This is probably the middle. It's my favorite. All right. Now make it into a tree. Tree pose is Vrksasana. Try to square your hips to the floor here. Hmm. Hmm. In tree pose, you want to have your foot below your knee or above your knee, but not on your knee. Okay. We're always protecting that knee joint. Now. We're moving some, through some balances. If you want to lean on something, lean on something. I'm not looking. Or if you fall down, that's good. See if your tree wants branches. Yeah. Breathing here. Yeah. All right. I'm turning. You don't have to turn. Come into a warrior three super band. Yeah. Mm. Stretch it out here. Hopefully you have a little more room than I do, but maybe you don't. It's okay. Breathe. And then let that back foot come back and find warrior two. I'm going to describe warrior two for a long time. Warrior two is a really important pose in yoga. So what we're doing here, that back foot is at 60 degrees. Front knee is like 90 degrees but it doesn't matter like maybe you want like this kind of warrior two or maybe you like like this kind of warrior two uh, it doesn't matter okay the important thing is that this pose is a balance we are balancing here okay first take your shoulders up to your ears back and down the back open your hands so the important part of the balance is to use this back foot basically that's it a lot of people come to warrior two and they think they're doing a lunge and they take it all up here. It's certainly what your body's asking, right? But you gotta use your mind, send your weight equally backwards and forwards. Where you two is a balance. And it's an opportunity to really open the heart, really roll those shoulder blades back and down the back. We're working. Yeah. Now, take your back hand down the back leg. Open your heart this way. Now we threw our, all of our weight backwards. And now we need to readjust. Find that balance again. Good, windmill your hands up, straighten your front leg. I'm straightening this leg. Arms are still out like a warrior two. Lean down over that leg. I'm in one plane here, one plane. And now come into a triangle pose. Now look at my triangle. I am so revolutionary in my triangle for, uh, for a yoga teacher because there's a lot of pressure, well, pressure, to be like, oh, like, ooh, way down or whatever. That's not right for me. This is right for me. I have my hand right under my knee, and what I've achieved here is good alignment. My body parts are all lined up on each other. That's what we want. That's a good triangle pose, okay? Maybe see if your head wants to look up, or maybe see if it wants to look down. Optionally, you're gonna make this pose a little bit harder here if you want, if not, just stay here. If you wanna make it harder, bend that front knee. Keep your arms the way they are. Taking the elbow to the inside of the knee, we're not putting weight on this hand. This is Utita Parasvakarnasana. It's halfway between a triangle and a warrior two. And so you see what we did here, we threw all of our weight forward. This is pretty hard. You gotta really engage this back leg, make it work for you. All right. Hands down to either side of that front foot. Step back to plank pose. Plank. Spread your fingers apart, press down through your knuckles. Yeah, hanging out in our plank a little bit. And now let's lower down to the count of five, ready? One, two, three, four, five. Put your chin on the floor. 
Put 10 toenails on the floor, grab your hands behind you, roll your shoulder blades back and down the back, open your heart. Cobra. We've already done a few cobras, but this is what I call muscly cobra. I like this. I like what it does for the shoulders. It's really unsubtle. Come down, put one cheek on the floor, pick up your feet, windshield away from back and forth. Yeah, let's do some more back work, wasn't that fun? Put your chin on the floor, arms out to the sides, lift up the top half of your body. Yeah. And then lift up your legs. This is full locust. Pretty much nobody likes this. We are working. Stay with your breath. Good. Come down. Other cheek on the floor. Windshield wiper your feet. The purpose of that, obviously, is to build your back. We're building back muscle so that you can go out to your yard and dig a hole and not throw your back out, okay? That's why we do that. One of the reasons. This windshield wiping is nice. It realigns the tailbone and the SI joint. It rolls out your quads. It's nice. Come on up to tabletop. Let's do tabletop circles. Just pick a direction. And we're kind of like rolling around our tabletop circles. Nice. Yeah. And then switch direction, same thing, other side. Now we're going to do a pose that almost everybody loves, all right? You're going to take your forearms to the floor. Keep your hips in the air. That's it. This is it. It's puppy pose. I like to put my forehead on the ground. I like to rag, wag my tail on my puppy. Breathing. If you want to, we're going to twist, okay? Take your right hand under your left, come onto the side of your head, side of your shoulder. Mm. This other hand comes up or tucks behind you or stays above your head. It really doesn't matter what that other hand does. It's about finding that twist. Mm. Untwist out of it, and let's just do that same thing other side, okay? You're still on your knees, coming up onto the right hand, the left hand goes underneath, and we're twisting. Mm. Letting go of something. Letting go of something. Release. Come back to your puppy pose. Forearms are on the mat. You're wagging your tail. Yeah. So stay in puppy if you like puppy. I like it. If you want to work a little bit harder, then straighten your legs. And here we are in dolphin. Dolphin is downward dog on your forearms. If you didn't feel downward dog working your shoulders, I bet you feel dolphin working your shoulders. It's big shoulder stuff. It's good. Breathe. If you feel all right, then pick up one leg. And if you don't want to pick up one leg, then don't. And if you feel like you want to hop, then you can hop. Don't go all the way over. We're just playing. We're just hopping. Yeah, switch your legs. Don't feel any pressure about this. Just be in your regular dolphin until that day when you're like, oh, I think I want to do that, and then do it. Good. Come back to your, doll, um, your puppy. And let's come back to a child's pose. Put your forehead on the floor. Feel your heart beating. Good. 
Come to tabletop. Spread your fingers part wide. Inhale to a cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Do you feel that? We did a lot of stuff and then we twisted and now we're doing our inhaling cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. And the spine, the bones of the spine are like ding, 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 ding. Then line back up. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, cat tuck. Inhale, cow lift. Exhale, down dog. Here we are again. And your arm goes from us now. I'm gonna do a vinyasa. Do this if you want to. A vinyasa is a sun salute. If you don't want to, then don't. Okay. Bend your knees up between your hands. Step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold bend. Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, hands to your heart. Inhale, arms over your head. Exhale, swan dive forward bend. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, like pose. Here comes that arm work. Same exhale, lower down. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, over your toes. Exhale, back over your toes, down dog. Bend your knees up between your hands. Step or jump to the front of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, forward bend. Inhale, arms over your head. Keep them up. This time, let's exhale this way. Just mirror me. Inhale up. Exhale this way. Inhale up. Exhale, hands to your heart. Good. So let's refine our Tadasana, our mountain, right? Because we're going to do all that stuff again on the other side, and we're going to breathe down into our belly, and we're just going to be totally fine and chill with this. Okay. First, find your feet. Move your body weight around to the front and the back and the inner edges and the outer edges. Find your feet. In yoga, there's this term, kapha. It's spelled K-A-P-H-A. -A, and it's earth energy. So, feel some earth energy through your feet, if you can. Take your kneecaps into your quads. Quads rotate inward, shins rotate outward. Pelvis is stable. Basically, your whole legs are engaged, lightly. Low ribs go down and back, shoulders go up and back, chin comes out of your chest, head floats like a balloon, press the back of your head against the air. And then rebalance your skeleton. If this is the only time today you think about your skeleton, it's still 100% more than everybody else you know. I think it's a good thing to do. All right, lean your body weight to the left. Pick up your right leg. Yeah. See if you can square your hips. Remember, you can bend this. You can grab this. You can straighten this. You can do this deal. This is the in-between. It's my favorite. Yeah, it's hard, though. It's hard. If you find, like me, that your head is trying to help out that foot, see if you can bring it back. Yeah. I'll make it a tree. Hip opener. See that? We're opening the hips. We're balancing. See if your tree wants some branches. I live in the mountains in a forest. It's November. There's a lot of tree action going on. Maybe think of a tree that you like. Good. Remember what we're going to do? I'm moving. You don't have to move. We're three. Yeah, this is a tough one. It's a lot of work for your back, back muscles and your glutes. A lot of work. It's also a really nice stretch for that standing leg. Breathing. If you're falling down, you're all right. Let's get back up and do it again. Good, step back to warrior two. Warrior two back foot is at 60 degrees. Front knee is at 90 degrees or whatever kind of angle you like. We're trying to keep that knee above the ankle. We're trying to roll the shoulder blades back and down the back to open the heart. We're trying to engage the back leg as much as the front leg. Distributing your weight evenly and beautifully. Warrior poses are elegant. They're elegant poses. Stay with your breath.
Back arm goes down the back leg. Open your heart to the side. So nice. Mm. Good. Windmill up, straighten that front leg. It's now straight. Lean over it. And come into whatever your triangle is. So your triangle, I'm stay in your triangle. I'm turning so that I can face the camera. Your triangle is going to be about alignment. You're going to be picturing that there's a sheet of glass in front of you and a sheet of glass behind you, okay? It's not about how far down you go. It's about if you are in one plane or not. Find that. Yeah. Good. Windmill your hands down to either, oh wait, no wait, I forgot, sorry. So here we are in triangle. If you want to make it harder, make it into Utita Parzokanasana by bending that front knee. And now this hip is like, man, what? And so you're using your mind to send some weight to this back leg. Tell it to help out. Good. Hands to either side of that front foot, step back to plank pose. Lower down. Chaturanga Dandasana, hovering plank. Inhale over your toes. Exhale, down dog. Walk it out. I'm going to do some core work here from down dog. And if this is like crazy hard on your shoulders, do it um, from tabletop instead. Okay? It's this action. Okay? I'm doing it from downward dog. Pick up your right leg, downward dog splits. Exhale your knee to your head. Inhale it up. Exhale it to your left elbow. Inhale it up. Exhale it to your right elbow. Inhale it up. And now take it through for pigeon pose. So, if you already know how to do pigeon, be in your pigeon. If not, I'm going to talk about this for one million years. Okay, so pigeon pose. Basically what we're doing is we're bending our knee underneath us in order to get into this hip. Okay, find this hip muscle. Then, once we've found it, we're trying to lay our entire body weight down on top of it so that gravity will open it up. That's what we're doing. Now, the complicated thing about pigeon is that everybody's hips have different levels of flexibility, right? Like if you're somebody who runs up mountains, you might end up feeling this in your knee instead of your hip because your hip is going to be really tight. And so I work with a lot of athletes, people like that, you got to find a way to modify this so you feel it where you're supposed to feel it. Just right here. Okay, do not ever feel it in your knee. Move your body around. Find something that feels right. You could put something like a block or a book here, if that feels good. Or, or like, I have people who like to like lean on something gigantic in front. I don't care. Just find a way to be in this hip. All right. Good. Sorry about that long speech. Be in your vision. Hopefully you were in your vision that whole time. Okay, so we're going to put weight in our hands. And we're going to take that back leg. I'm turning. You don't have to turn, okay? Stay exactly where you are. I'm turning. We're going to take that back leg to 10 o'clock. Take it to 10 o'clock. And if that's not an easy motion, just get into this position however you need to, okay? So um, I'm also going to switch my legs because I'm mirroring you. Don't switch your legs. Be right where you are. All right, so ground your hips. Find your breath. This is part of Rita Jonas through Sasana. I do this in almost every class. And here's why. This hip is getting released. This hamstring is getting released. And we're doing a twist, which we're about to get to, okay? Ground your hips. Turn your body from the waist, just from the waist, in the direction of that leg. Extend that foot. And now come down. So it's a forward bend, and all my speeches about forward bends apply here, all right? It's not about how deep you go. It's about how much integrity you bring to this pose. Trying to feel the release here. 
Feel it in your hamstring, find that. People who are really flexible can come down and lay their belly on their thigh and have their lumbar spine and integrity in this pose. Do that if, you, if that's you. If that's not, then you're just finding the place where you feel the release in the back of your leg. And you're breathing into it. That's, that's it, that's yoga, that's, that's it, yeah. We're not done, we're still going, but right here, what you feel, being present in your body and, um, yeah, that's yoga. Good, come up, put your feet together. This is my number one favorite yoga pose. Feel your feet, touching your feet. Be with that sensation for a second. One foot is touching the other foot, the other foot is touching the other foot. Ah, grab your ankles, take your shoulders forward, up to your ears, back and down the back. The spine gets about an inch and a half longer. This is Bhattakonasana, a cobbler's pose. It's releasing the adductors and it's rebalancing the spine and rebalancing the head over the spine. Yeah, I'm turning, you don't have to turn. Okay. So from here, we're gonna take our hands behind us, fingers pointing towards the hips. Lean backwards, roll your shoulder blades back and down the back, stretch into your wrists, stretch into your arms, stretch across here. Mmm, that's nice. That's nice. Breathe. Yes, now come down onto your forearms behind you. And we're going to find that same thing. Take the shoulders up to the ears, back and down the back. Open your heart. This time, see if your head wants to go back. And if it doesn't, don't, okay? You're going to know right away whether this is an appropriate motion for you. If it's not, don't do it. Your cervical spine is delicate. Breathing. So now you're on your forearms, wouldn't it be like a fun idea to bicycle me on? Remember this from before? Yeah, bicycle. Work in the core. Can't have too much core strength. Engaging your mula bandha, your kegels. Engaging your udiana bandha, your diaphragm. Alright, good enough. Come down, put your feet on the floor. Back of your head on the floor, shoulders on the floor, lift up, it's a bridge. Sit to Sarvanasana, bridge pose. Feel your feet engaging with the floor. Feel your leg muscles on, feel your abdomen stretching, feel your heart opening. Feel your shoulder blades rolling back and down the back. Feel your throat a little bit constricted, feel your breath coming through your throat and through your sinuses. Feel your blood flow reversing. Back down from your legs to your heart and your head. Mm -hmm. And then roll one vertebrae back down onto the mat. And then the next vertebrae and then come all the way down. And hug your knees. This pose is child's pose upside down and what we're doing here is we're massaging the internal organs between the thighs on the front of you and the floor on the back of you it's so nice they love it just feel that cross your ankles roll up to see it in roll over your feet come to tabletop Spread your fingers apart wide. 
Inhale to a cat lift. Exhale, cat up. Inhale, cat lift. Exhale, cat up. One more. Inhale, cat lift. Exhale, cat up. Yeah. So this core thing that we're going to do, remember you can do it from tabletop, or you can do it from downward dog. Come on up to downward dog. Pick up your left leg, or you're in tabletop with your left leg up. Good. Exhale that knee to your head and hover. This is core work. Inhale it up. Exhale it to your left elbow. Inhale up. This is hard, by the way. If you can't do this in the beginning, don't worry about it. It's coming. Exhale to the other elbow. Inhale up. And then come back and find your pigeon. Find your pigeon on this side. And the good news is I'm not going to do that long speech on this side. Just come right into it. You heard what I said. Find yours. Don't hurt yourself. Be here and breathe. Thinking about your left hip. A lot of yoga teachers get a lot more specific than me about pigeon pose about like what kind of angle your knee needs to be making and stuff like that um if that makes sense to you then do it their way i just i uh, i teach pigeon based on what i see in people's hips i think that most of the world needs to find their own pigeon and it might not look the same that's my opinion stay safe keep it in your hip not in your knee Put weight in your hands. Let's take that back leg around to two o'clock. Right. Ground your hips. Make your spine long. Turn your body in the direction of that leg from your waist. Lay yourself down. We're not trying to achieve anything. We're trying to feel a stretch. I mean, we're trying to achieve something in terms of feeling a stretch, but we're not trying to look like anything in particular here, okay? Just find a place where you feel this and where you feel this and breathe through it. So, do you remember a long time ago when we crossed our legs? And I talked about cross-legged and stuff. So, come to your cross-legged again and see if you can remember how you crossed your legs before and cross them the other way. So, it's probably gonna, I can't remember, it's probably gonna be your non-dominant, whatever your non-dominant is, okay? Take your hands to your knees. Let's inhale forward, remember this? Exhale back. Tracing a line around the hips. Inhale forward. Exhale back. When we inhale forward, we're doing a little bit of a back bend. When we exhale back, we're doing a little bit of core work. Let's feel that. And then switch directions. Inhale forward. Exhale back. Inhale forward. Do it a couple more times. Yeah, all right. And then let your spine get really long. <clears throat> Take your shoulders up to your ears, back and down the back. 
Before we do anything else, let's pay attention to our neck, okay? Left ear to the left shoulder, or thereabouts, and then exhale it forward. Inhale, right ear to right shoulder, exhale forward. And that's it. We're just going to do exactly that motion over and over. Stay with your breath. Exhale in forward. Inhaling up. Stay deep in your body. Notice stuff about your neck. Notice what's going on. If you come to some part of your neck that's stuck, stop and breathe through it. For some of us, this is where we're carrying like 90% of our attention. Just be with it. Let it go. Next time your head comes to center, pick it up. Take your hands to your heart. Inhale them up. Exhale to your heart. Inhale up. Exhale to your heart. Inhale up. Exhale to your heart. Last time, inhale up. Keep them up. Yeah, then we're gonna take our left hand to our right knee and our right hand behind us and twist. Breathing. Back hand goes across the ceiling. Stack the eyes of your elbows on top of each other. Wrap your hands around each other. Inhale, that whole thing up, tip your head forward. Exhale down. Feeling it in your shoulders, feeling it in your neck. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down, release your hands. Cross-legged forward bend. Remember what I said before about cross-legged forward bend or any forward bend? It doesn't mean you have to actually go forward. <laughs> I guess that's the thesis, right? It doesn't mean you have to actually go forward. Or if you go forward, it doesn't have to be going forward very far. You're just coming forward enough so you feel that stretch in your hips. Feel something letting go. Remember before when I looked at my phone, like when we first started, I looked at my phone. I didn't, I don't actually remember what time it said it was. I think that we have done about an hour. I'm going to call that an hour. So come on up. Here in a yoga class, if we were in a studio, the teacher would be like, scan your body and see what else you need to do before Shavasana, okay? So that means you're like, hmm, we did all that, but I'm still a little stuck in this shoulder or something. I need to stretch or I need to, I need to, whatever. If there's something you need to do, then do it. Otherwise, come down and be in your Shavasana. I'm gonna turn around. Shavasana is like this. This is Shavasana. Hopefully your floor is a little warmer than mine. That's it. That's it. I'm going to walk you into your Shavasana. Alright, so the first thing is the muscles of your eyes. Let go of the muscles of your eyes. They're not going to want to let go. They're not going to want to keep working. Let go of those muscles. Let go of the muscles of your jaw. I 
and then locate and let go of the muscles between the top, the base of your head and the top of your neck. And then let go of the muscles between your neck and your shoulders. Let go of the front and back of your heart. Let go of your hips. Let go of your abdomen. This is a part of my body for myself that I often clench without noticing. Let go of your abdomen. Let go of your thighs and your calves and your feet. Let go of your right shoulder all the way down to your right hand. Let go of your left shoulder all the way down to your left hand. Be in your shavasana. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, roll your wrists, roll your ankles, keep your brain right where it is, we're not waking up, we're not coming out of Shavasana, and just moving your body a little bit, okay? Inhale your arms above your head and your feet away from you, do a big long stretch. Exhale, bend your knees and roll onto your right side in the fetal position, and just be here. You're honoring your heart. Remember that part where we thought about our skeleton? No, we're thinking about our heart. See if you can feel it beating. And then come on up to seated. Take your hands to your heart. Your practice is important. I'm going to tell you exactly why. Okay. We did all that. It was what it was. But what it did was it took stress out of your body. It really did. It really worked. And people in your life are going to feel that. 
your family and your friends, your co-workers are going to notice that you're a um, less stressed out version of you. Okay, It's physical. So on behalf of them and on behalf of myself, thank you for practicing yoga. Namaste.